Okay, thank you so much for coming to the Sashiko live streaming. This is Atsushi. Thursday night, Thursday 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I would like to start stitching while talking about Sashiko. Let me check the audio first. I learned how to check the audio before the live streaming, so it should be okay, but just a second. Yep, that's perfect. Ah. <laughs> so this is the live streaming where I stitch Sashiko um, without any edit or modification. I will just stitch in front, in front of the camera right now while talking about some Sashiko stories. Um, today I did not bring any topic. I will think about it, what's going to be a good topic to talk about. Uh, but the point is to talk about, to share some Sashiko stories while me stitching. So this is not a lecture, this is not going to be webinar or tutorials. Uh, it's going to be something that I can share stories while me working on something I would like to do. So if you have any topic, if you have any request, if you have any um, request for the topic for me to talk about, um, that's really appreciated. Besides that, I will move to the camera to my hand and I will... St oh, I'm sorry, uh, one announcement. There's one, uh, one announcement. So next Thursday, um, February 9th, Thursday night, and after the live streaming, we will have the gathering, um, which is the more like closer connection to the people who like to stitch. So live streaming is more like one direction. I can read the comment and I would like to communicate more, but it is pretty much the one direction. In the um, gathering, you can join and you can ask not ask a question, but you can share your opinions, or you can you can share your perspective about um, the Sashiko or Japanese culture, for that matter. And that's gonna be after, right after this live streaming, so 10:30 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you like to join that, um, please try to get a ticket from GiveBatter.com. Um, the link is available in the description area, or simply log into the Pram pramstudio.com which I have not listed here some well I should it should be somewhere and if you have registered already before you don't have to do um, you don't have to get a ticket or you don't have to do any additional registration Michael-san will send you the link if you're new to that please try to get a ticket which, which is free so just you know get a link for that and I hope that you can join that as well it's gonna be next Thursday February 9th okay all right, so that's about it. I will switch the camera to this, and I will keep stitching. Oof. What should I talk about today? Mm, TBA means like to be announced, right? So I wrote down to be announced, but I did not bring any topic right now. Well, that's the beauty of this live streaming. But, <laughs> well, let's start thinking about it while stitching too. It may be a good idea to do it. Where's my... Oh. It's sometimes difficult to find a topic to talk about, as I have so many things that I'd like to talk Mm. Yeah, just a second, okay. The thread is not coming out. <laughs> oh, the quilties. Not a quilties, I'm sorry. Quilt buzz? Ooh, I forgot that. And there was the podcast uploaded on the quilt buzz dot quilt buzz, thank you. Quilt buzz, thank you, Helen. Let's talk about that. I think that interview it's quite long. It's I think it was pretty long. It was 
long interview to begin with, and I think that she, Amanda, was going to use a lot of those, so it was not like a short clip. But I believe that it explains quite a lot of uh, missing information or perspective about what Sashiko is. Uh, Amanda took my workshop before, so she knew what I like to share. Uh, so it was kind of easier for us to start talking about it. Like, I often get a question, I often get a request to talk about Sashiko, but they ask me to start explaining what Sashiko is, and I will, I can do that. I will do that. Because the audience will not know, would not know what Sashiko is. So, regardless of the interviews, when I was asked to talk about what Sashiko is, I do talk about it. At the same time, when the interview are, interview are, interview are, I'm the interviewee. When the person who is listening to my stories does not have the basic understanding of what I'm trying to say, uh, the person cannot direct the interview discussion. So it is quite important for me to know that the person who is interviewing right now, at that moment, knew what I was going to answer. So that was a very smooth and also very deep <clears throat> discussion about what Sashiko is in the uh, podcast setting. I have done that with the other uh, person from the UC... Uh, was it UCLA? No, UC Berkeley, I think, student. It's somewhere, so it was pretty good as well. But I tried to not to uh, accept or try to not to be on the media where the interviewee does not know what I'm trying to say. I've tried before, but um, it's going to be very unfortunate for everybody because um, many people have expectation to what Sashiko is in advance to the discussion or those interview. And usually what they expect me to say is different from what I would really say. So they want me to say Sashiko is the technique, like ancient technique to mend uh, for the sustainable purpose. Um, some people might expect me to say that Sashiko is the Japanese way to enjoy mending or visible mending. Um, other people are maybe expecting me to say that the Sashiko techniques are very sophisticated techniques or some sustainable, some um, it's gonna link to the previous live streaming like last week. Some people might expect me to say Sashiko is Zen like or meditation stitching. Those are going to be denied by me in the interview process, right? Because I don't I don't say I don't think and I don't say that Sashiko is the technique. There are techniques, and Sashiko can be technique, but there's, Sashiko, the word itself, is not the word for technique. So by saying those things, the interview interviewer get really confused, and then they try to twist my word to the direction they would like to lead me to. So they have already their conclusion, and they expect me to say what they like me to say, or that what they already planned it. And they keep asking the same question until I say what they want to hear. And that's quite disturbing. That's quite frustrating. And the result is not good for both of us. They probably spend a lot of time in editing. And, you know, so those of those... Because of those... I don't want to say discrepancy, but... Those differences of expectation, I try to not to take any request from somebody somebody 
who does not really know what Sushiko is. Ideally, I want them to take my workshop so they know really what I'm talking about. But at least I want them to read some basic... Like, I, I share a lot of Instagram posts and YouTube videos, so I want them to at least watch some of the videos and understand what Sashiko is first. Some people think it's arrogant, probably, you know, it might be arrogant, but I think it's the sort of basic requirement to be respectful. There was one YouTuber, I think that she was a YouTuber, but she asked me to be on her YouTube, and I asked her to learn what Sashiko is in advance and she said that she doesn't have time for that <laughs> and I don't have time for that neither then um, she was probably expecting to have me so that she can get explanation about what Sashiko is and but that's and that her plan is based she if she is gonna be listening to the stories her expectation is gonna be somewhere, and then if I say something completely different from some, completely different from her expectation, then the YouTube itself is gonna be some argument or discussion. That's not good for either of us. So, the Quilt Buzz, the podcast from the Quilt Buzz, is not that. It's we are we were on the same page, and then the interviewer was directing me to the uh, stories that I could share in the limited time. So please listen. If you have, it's I think it's free. So please take a look at that, listen to that. I get a feedback that that was something. The other side of the stories was some explanation. The other side of the Sashiko introduced me introduced in English so I hope that will help to understand what Sashiko is I mean as I keep saying here every day every time the person the people who I have to deliver the message are not the people here you are already understanding what I'm trying to say I mean you know I would like to share as many stories as possible here as well but they will not listen until they change their mind, so those opportunities will be very important for me to have more opportunities, <laughs> more chance to talk to that, share that. But I have to, I don't, not have to, I would like to be comfortable as well too. So that's the kind of standard that I choose to pick. Who I am going to work with. But I, I think it is too late. Unfortunately, it is really too late to for me to be the mainstream. It is too late for me to be the mainstream. The explanation about Sashiko in English has been done already, so it has become something else already. So what I share is going to be kind of irregular information. Some people might not even want to listen to that. Um, the other might find it interesting, but I believe that there are people who does not even want to admit that they, these stories exist. So... As a result, unfortunately, there is a kind of big gap between, I mean, in the current trend is splitting the group of Sashiko people into two categories. And it does not divide it by the citizen or cultural background or nationalities or language for that matter. So that categorization, they are splitting into two. That categorization is not like Japanese versus non-Japanese or somebody who understands Japanese culture, no, you know, somebody who does not care about Japanese culture. The big culture is not there. The big culture is those who try to just enjoy it, uh, who those try to listen to the kind of question they carry. 
go deep in a little bit deeper into and you know because of this two categorization splitting the group into two um some people accuse me of being i'm kind of splitting the group into two by saying what i think or what i feel what i like to share stories this is not opinion this is just stories and i am sharing those stories in a place where everybody's just having fun and by sharing those stories some people think that i'm breaking that i'm destroying that fun creative world to be into different group but i what i would like to do is to include everybody including like including <laughs> inclusion not exclusion um, the f having fun and i'm being creative itself is great but those positivity or superficial fun can leave somebody behind especially those who has very thick cultural contents rich cultural contents not thick so what i'm trying to do is to leave no one who has been actually stitching sashiko for more than years behind And it's not easy because having fun is much easier than learning something new. Especially in this world, you know, instant fun is more important than anything. So I know I'm trying to do something crazy. Well, I am doing something crazy already, but somebody got to do it. Somebody has to do it. I really think that many people wonder what is the difference between Sashiko and the other stitching. Like many people start saying like, well, you know, Sashiko is the Japanese technique of stitching and they kind of stop thinking there. But if they continue practicing Sashiko, they might, they should kind of start thinking that is there any difference between what I learned as this hand stitching and also this sashiko stitching? And, you know, I'm having fun is going to be the answer to that question, probably, but it does not explain that. Those small things, small, those question. Uh, sorry, cl cl clarifying, clearing those small questions will help us to keep stitching. Otherwise, they probably will stop stitching at some point. Deep understanding, not deep, like normal understanding can lead us to the uh, continuous practice. So, And I understand that right now it's not really required or even demanded. Major, major the majority does majority do not demand do not want those long stories but by not leaving it by not carrying those long stories there will be nobody who can even share that in very very soon in a very few years so that's what i'm doing here Hello, Lily san. Thank you so much for coming. So, your question, not a question, your, your request for me to talk about something specific is very good because, quite honest, I do not know what you don't know. <laughs> Everything I share is quite normal for me. So it's the I say that I have only shared ten percent of uh, what ten percent of the things I like to share. At the same time, it's the journey of realizing the fact that something I know as the ordinary is something that can surprise the world.
possible topics to discuss. Has there been any news in the world of Soshiko, like exhibit or prominent artisans? That's a really good question. The, the trend, the current trend of Sashiko in Japan is the small kit, small, um, I don't have it right now here with me, but if king, that, um, this side, oops, the size of this big, about, I think, 30, 30, 33 centimeters square, so it's about 12 inch, I guess, no. I'll bring it next time, but um, on that white cloth, they make a beautiful pattern. So white fabric plus colorful thread is the car current trend in Japan, in Japan, which is going to be probably the trend in the U.S. soon, or probably already is. And that's a great trend. I, I'm not saying that's a bad trend or good trend. It's a good it's a trend that it's good and there are quite many artisans such called craftsmen i would say probably craftsmen because they are probably doing by themselves or even artists for that matter i guess there are such cool artists who has been doing that and they sometimes have the other craft as their main job like knitter knitting and then they try to jump into the sashiko and they those people have the connection to the publisher, so they publish a lot, not a lot, they published a book or so, and there are quite many of those. So they are, as long as I know, there are several books published last year, maybe more than several. several. And that's part of Sashiko, it's just not the Sashiko I practice, so... In my understanding, like in the practice of Sashiko, I do. There is no exhibition or prominent, prominent. I I think I understand the word prominent, um, prominent artisans. But there are so many. There are quite many. One, two, three, four, five, five projects ongoing right now with my students to make something big. Uh, so the Sashiko friends, I call them friends, but the friends in Japan who learn Sashiko from me are collaborating each other to make few projects. And I would like to have them exhibited somewhere. And we will have the exhibition too. Um, my mother Keiko will have the exhibition in Japan in April 19th to 22nd. So if you are going to be in Tokyo around that time, She'll be there and she's exhibiting some of her work. It's not going to be in the museum, so it's not like official setting, but at least you can uh, see what she makes. And the good part is probably you can touch it too. <clears throat> what we make is, after all, just the cloth, fabric. So we do not like to put it behind the glass so nobody can touch it. Like, I want you to touch. If you can wear, I want you to wear. That's what I recommend in the workshop in-person workshop please touch please wear please do you know i'm not make for the, <laughs> it's not art for us it's just something the jacket so touch is great so for that to, to answer the deeds question uh it is happening in japan and i will make a report I hope I can make the report when I go there, and I hope that I can keep offering those in the future as well. At the same time, you're always welcome to visit my mom. I have some policies to visit, but if you if you take the online class or if you take in-person class, you're kind of free to go. <laughs> I don't want to say free to go, but you know, as long as Keiko is available, you can visit. Taking the class is probably, not a probably, I mean, it's a big commitment for some people, I understand that, a big investment, but it's going to change a lot of perspective, and it's going to help, the help, not even help, maximize the experience with Keiko, because she does not teach well, you know, artists don't teach well, 
she is a really good artist, but she does not teach well, so it will really. If you're gonna go to the snow hill, good snow hill, I want to practice first. Little bit, little bit. Because the snow hill you might go is a little bit difficult than you think. I mean, not difficult, more. There's so much things to look around. So I don't want to just focus on skiing or snowboarding. I want to enjoy the scenery whilst skiing and snowboarding. Jedo san, konnichiwa, konbanwa. Jamie, hello, thank you. I think understanding Sashiko's history and culture makes it different from just teaching. Thank you. That's the difference, yo. <laughs> Candida got, Candida got a really good point. In fact, that's the only answer I can give you. There's no difference between Sashiko and other stitching except that history and culture. So if we decided to ignore the history and story and culture, what's the point of calling it Sashiko? There's no point. It's just, you know, admitting that it's a marketing term. In that case, that's perfectly fine. The point is that... <clears throat> I just don't want them to fake it. If they think that that's the Sashiko is the great marketing word, I understand that. Everybody has a right to use the marketing term, so go ahead, use it. But make sure to say that it's a marketing term. The goal is to sh get attention by using this. Like, for example, if one is making like a sneakers or jacket with a taste of sashiko, they can say that this is sort of the marketing term. I'm using this term to make um, more attention, to have more attention. I think that's perfectly fine. <laughs> Some people may be worried about it, some many, I mean, actually, it happened already. So Nike made a Sashiko shoes and many people worried about how badly hurt I was. Nope, <laughs> not at all. Like, zero. I, I can say it's a zero impact to me. To be honest, I even wanted to have one. It was quite expensive. And many people actually got surprised why I was not hurt. Because I kept saying, like, you know, it's painful to see those Sashikos change. Um, I, the, the whole explanation is somewhere on the Patreon, so you can read that very long article, why it was not painful to me. But long story short, it was not painful because I knew that, and I knew that everybody would know that it's the tr marketing term. Nobody think that it's a, no I, I, I nobody it's a probably big word but I did not think that Sashiko would be changed by a shoes maker such Nike I did not think that Nike will change the culture of Sashiko I did not believe that Nike will change the history of Sashiko and those who appreciate the Nike shoes with Sashiko ideas will not probably practicing sashiko for years they might try to stitch but they will probably not stitch 10 years 20 years because nike is making that well some people call that cultural appropriation and it's probably true but i do not consider that as the painful way to do it so it's it was not it was not even scary, it was not painful, I, I don't, some people say you should be, <laughs> one gave me a good advice, not a good advice, she, she told me that I should be painful, I should be in pain, no, no, ah, am I supposed to be in pain right now, I don't know, but the problem is that when they use the word sashiko, with ignoring the stories or the culture, yet saying that that's the Sashiko, Japanese stitching technique. 
those are the unfortunately i'm sorry to say but those often are teachers such good teachers or they call themselves masters or they publish books without proper understanding that's gonna probably change the whole picture of sashiko if i keep ignoring that or keep keep quiet about it nike itself will not change the culture because we all know that it's a trend we all know that it's just a word but if one decided to kind of modify the culture to meet the market demand um, kind of modify what sashiko is to meet what the students would like to hear then that's a very scary thing and that's a very painful thing because it is changing culture itself and by saying teacher uh, many some people may think that i am accusing all the teachers i am not accusing all the teachers so please don't get me wrong there are a few teachers in this world not a few two categories of teachers right um, one teacher the categorizing two t two types of teacher one type of teacher is the my daughter's teacher like elementary school teacher call it um Elementary school teachers are not specialized into one specific area. Uh, she or he might be good at music, but he or she does not play one in musical instrument to be like a profession. So those teachers are very great navigator or guide for students to learn something new so they're like a literally a guide to share things around so if they are a teacher who is showing what sashiko is around as a part of the stitching history i am very happy to help them or even be part of that teaching because they will open up their stories i'm sorry they open up the possibility of how sashiko can be introduced so if one is kind of teaching uh, like a textile histories and then decided to introduce what Sashiko is, I'm happily to be part of that, which I am going to be part of the FIT this semester. Very, very small talk, but I will have opportunity to talk about Sashiko in FIT some event. So I I'm happy to do that. The second category of these teachers are somebody very specific, specialized in something very specific, like university's professors or, like, you know, me. Even like university's professor specialized in mathematics, they have their own specialization. That person, if they consider them as a teacher, they have to know about that. Like literally, like the very. <laughs> They have to be sort of the top of the field if they are talking, teaching about that. At least they have to spend so much years to learn what it is before they start teaching. So there's a huge difference between the math teachers in the elementary school and math professors in the grad school or PhD programs. They are teaching the same thing, math. But their goal, their role is different. We cannot mix those two. Unfortunately, in Sashiko, they are mixing those two. And that's the pain. That's the problem. That's the reason I keep speaking up. <laughs> we always see you stitching as an old pattern. What other patterns do you prefer? Any least favorite patterns? Ah. Uh... The reason I stitch a snow pattern is because I am stupid enough to say that I have to, I'm going to stitch 100 meters of these patterns, 100 meters, 100 meters of these patterns, and the time limit was last year, so I still have halfway to go. And I have another, not another, I have other project going on, which requires a little bit of my attention, concentration, so I don't have time to stitch this asano patterns. In fact, this is the live streaming is the only time I stitch just no patterns right now. Yeah, 
it's just right now. So the reason I picked these patterns is that I don't have to think about it. Like, I really don't think about it. Like nothing. It's almost all pilot, so I can focus on my conversation, my talk. Sometimes I use my hands like that to talk about, to explain the things, to make myself, my brain clear. But in general, I can talk while stitching, and that is most important thing in this live streaming. So that's that. That's the reason I'm stitching as well. I I don't really have the preference in the patterns, I guess. I like Asanoha stitching, Asanoha patterns of Shippo, but ah, I don't like the patterns that I have to move fabric a lot. Um, the pattern called Tuzuki Yamagata is a pretty beautiful pattern. You should can you can Google it, Suzuki Yamagata. It's quite beautiful patterns and many people likes that, but I don't because I have to keep moving the fabric, rotating the fabric, and that's annoying. <laughs> that's quite annoying. So But that's my simple, simple preference. Similar, because of the similar reasons, I don't like Limon or the other, like any pattern that I have to rotate the fabric, I prefer not to do that. And also the preference changes based on the project's purpose. If the purpose is to make both, fa both <laughs> the, make the both side of the fabric as the finish side like this one, um, I will make both sides as the finish side of 100 meters, yeah, I know. If that's the goal of the sashiko stitching, then some patterns becomes very less ideal because of the kasanes, numbers of kasanes we have to do. That's, you know, that can define the difficulties or, not difficulties, trouble of someness. So, it's based on the fabric, the preference changes as well. Um, so it's really difficult to find one preference, but... What is the name of the pattern that looks like chain of flowers? Chain of flowers. Probably kaki no hana? Probably? I don't know. I just don't imagine. Tsuzuki Yamagata. Tsuzuki Yamagata. If Lily san is here, ask Lily san, she can write it down for you. Lily san, if you're here, help them out. Thank you. I prefer the geometric patterns versus design patterns. I can get into the machine. Yeah, I 100% I agree with you. I, that's why I don't do the pictures patterns, like design patterns, unless it's... <laughs> for some reason, I have like a very old project. I don't know why I have it here, but remember this? Like a few years ago, I was doing this. I don't know if you remember this. If you go back to my previous live streaming a few years ago, Like completely no plans whatsoever. You probably like this one, right? I kind of don't. I don't know why I have it. Oh yes, I was preparing the stuff for the quilt con and I found this and it's it's on your fabric pattern that I'm stitching. So it's one of the nine patterns. It's one of the nine patterns. I think it's 
、丸尻尾、角尻尾。I think I don't, don't I have a video explaining which pattern is which? I think I do have a video that explaining pattern's name on YouTube, I guess. I probably have uploaded. If not, I will upload it soon. Uh, there's a video somewhere that I explain all the nine patterns name and probably even meaning. For each pattern, and I think I uploaded it to the YouTube. At least I did it, oh, probably. I just did it on the Instagram. I will double check and I will upload it to the YouTube as well. I, I, will, I will see if I have it on YouTube. I will look into that. If not, I will upload it to the YouTube as well. I'm sorry, ah,、oh, yeah, it might be not on YouTube. Key. Rebecca, thank you for the comment. Hi, I'm new to Sashiko. I'm curious why mostly blue fabric used. So many beautiful colors are used in other g a r m e n t Um, because that was available. The reason is that because that was available, <laughs> because that was the easiest fabric to get for them back then, not right now, probably. But so, Sashiko wise, I mean, like as Jade replied to you, there's no like rules to use what fabric should be used. And the reason that they use the indigo fabric, or blue or dark, or gray, mud, mully gray, or those R3 colors is that they could get it easier than red fabric. Like it's about 200 years ago stuff. So they did not have those bright colors like here. And right now, You can use any fabric, any color of fabric. Of course, there's a preference, and I prefer to protect Japanese small textile manufacturers, like small fabric textile mill, which we have been the, like, you know, having business with because they are about to go. <laughs> they are really small and they're about to go, and we have to, I have to keep them alive somehow. I need them. Not have to. I, I really would need them to be there. So I prefer to keep using the fabric from them. So any fabric is good is the statement. That being said, I would like to you know, recommend the good fabric for Sashiko stitching because it's not always the same across the culture. But anyway,、um, yeah, any color is good. And I always use this analogy, but it's like asking, like, why do you use ketchup for your fries? Like, why do you dip that ketchup? Because that's I get used to. Technically speaking, we can dip jam, right? It's the same dipping. Or we can dip, you know, whatever you, we can dip, whatever we want. There's no answer what to dip to the fries.、Uh, you name it, like, you know, it can be jam. <laughs> I don't know why if only jam is coming up, or like, you know, cream. Soy sauce. Anything is fine, but I prefer ketchup. <laughs> That's probably the reason. Also, indigo dye was easier for the com com commoners and less expensive, I would think, especially since Sashiko started a survival craft. Yep, you got it right. You got it right. I'm so glad that you can explain that. Please keep explaining that when somebody asks the question. 
those are gonna explain a lot so probably other people say well we use the indigo and the white thread because it's tradition mm, yes probably but th that's not the reason i use indigo and white it's, it's just it's easier for me i don't have to think <laughs> I don't have to think. Like thinking about the color is one very difficult project for me. So when I stitch on the denim, I really have to use my brain. Like you know, colors are so difficult, don't you think? I like. Where I use the red, blue, yellow, like those are gonna make me feel stressed out. <laughs> That's another reason I don't consider myself artist, because artists probably enjoy that. I don't. Unfortunately, I don't. I'm sorry, I just don't. It makes me more <laughs> frustrated, because the result might not be as, uh, you know, as I think. It's just too much thinking fine thread color yes i can probably go with it fabric colors that's too many choices so it's really personal Sharon, thank you. And indigo protects and strengthens the fabric. Sometimes cloth would be redyed in the indigo for the protection. It's very, very true. Thank you so much for mentioning that. I did not say it because it kind of limit the indigo dye as well. So what Sharon said is 100% right. It is very true. It is going to strengthen the fabric. Just not the color though, it's the ingredients of indigo. Uh, the color is just outcome. So indigo color, blue color is n itself is not the protection, but indigo is going to be the protection. So indigo color is the oxidation process, right? Unlike the Kakishib persimmon tanning, the indigo itself is the... So Kakishib is pretty much layering the in, uh, layering the Kakishib juice on the th thread. As a result, they change the color by sunlight. See, I have to use my hand when I explain those information that I am not professional. So I'm not really professional in the dyeing. So if I'm wrong, Please correct me. So persimmon tanning is more like a layering. In order to have a darker color, you have to layer them. Um, because of that thin layer on the thread, um, color changes by the sunlight. So that's why we call it um, sun dye, taiyo zome. Taiyo is sun, zome is dyeing. So some people call it dye with the sun. And indigo is the oxidation process. When you, I'm talking about the authentic Japanese natural indigo. When you dip the thread or fabric in the vat, V-A-T, vat, in the liquid, the color itself is not really blue-blue, but by the oxidation happening it becomes the in the it becomes that color oxidation so that chemical reaction makes the fabric a little stronger in my understanding well that's at least that's a, that's how i've heard <laughs> Sharon's explained pretty much everything I said in the two sentence. Ah, I wish I have that skill. 
Sharon did a great job explaining what I explained in 10 minutes by two second sentence. Indigo slow wear a bit. Perfect. Kakshib is more productive because it actually covered the textile rather than calling it. End of the story. <laughs> End of the explanation. Thank you. See? Oopsie. In, in indigo is something. Indigo is very, very, very interesting. Uh, there's one story about the indigo dye in Tokushima, Tokushima prefecture, where the indigo dye was their like main industries. Many people go to the Tokushima to learn the indigo dye right now, and probably the buy. So the indigo dye group, which I have worked together in New York, they. I think it was not from them, but from somebody I heard a very interesting story about indigo. And I... It's very... Inspiring. <laughs> wow, Sharon... Wow, great! You can teach, Sashiko. Please teach. Kakishiv can make a thick layer that is very unpleasant to stitch through. Um. Yeah, I don't say unpleasant because that's that's the word from those who stitch a lot. Like if you stitch a lot, like let's say a few hours every day. Yes, Kakishiba thread is very unpleasant. That's why I don't stitch with that. But if you're just stitching here and there, Kakishiba is a very great color to have a better protection too. And it's a beautiful color. But if you know if you know your own rhythm, if you have your own stitching rhythm and if you have your favorite thread, favorite fabric, and if you like to be on the rhythm for that day, Kakshibu might be unpleasant. It's not gonna be the first choice. But it's not bad. I would use it. <laughs> um, pleasant itself is correct, but very unpleasant, I don't know. There is a reason we die Kakshibu every year. It's, it's, there's something there. I have some sashiko, sashi, saki, bu, koro, back that are different. Oh, yes, so. Kakishibu thread is relatively okay, but if you are going to stitch on the Kakishibu fabric, that's a completely different story. It's probably almost impossible. I wouldn't say impossible, because I've done that. But that's... Those like spaces between the fabric are covered by kakishib layers, so... It's really tight. Probably worse than denim. No? I think it was worse than denim. <laughs> like worse than raw denim for that. If my under my memory is right. I don't remember it because that's a long time ago and since then I have not done that. But Kakishib fabric is especially the vintage Kakishib fabric, don't don't even try that. Like they are done very traditional way and nicely. Vintage Kakshib thread, not a thread, vintage Kakshib fabric can be, looks like soft. And it, it can be soft if they're very well used. But not, if not, that's one, <coughs> one fabric I never, exp not never, I do not really recommend.
although I say that it is no recommendation in the public, they are preference too. The worst are like lacquered cloth, yes. So you can stitch. As Jeremy is doing, you can stitch on any fabric. Fabric does not really. I mean, it, it does matter, but it's not the first things to worry about. If you have a limited budget, the first thing you have to do is the thread, second needle and thimble, and then third is the fabric. So... Yeah, fabric is... Enjoy the color, enjoy that. Going back to a little bit of the original story, is there any tip to enjoy the color? <laughs> it's a very stupid question because many people enjoy sashiko with deciding, like enjoying the color. So I don't enjoy the color selection much. To be honest, it, it's not good. I understand it's not good, but I do not. It's not my first thing I want to do. If somebody can decide it for me, I kind of will follow that. Is there any tip that I can start liking this process of choosing the color? Like I, it's a stupid question. I understand it's a stupid question, but I just don't know the color. I probably should learn the color first. Like going to the kind of college or community college to learn the color. There gotta be some course, Color 101 or something, right? Interior, some designing class, I guess, to learn what the color is. Which probably is not gonna change my sashiko, but you know, at least I can learn what I should do. Uh, yeah. So I have a sample here, so I will just show you right now before I go offline. But this is the denim I was working last year. Right, like I probably show you before, but... So I use the Y... Uh, it might not show. Is it showing? So if it does not show... So this is the wine red, this is blue, this is yellow, orange, lighter blue, and darker yellow, right? So I have about 15 colors, not natural dye, this, I have 15 synthetic, huh? sorry, I have 21 synthetic monotone color in my stock that I sell online, so I used... One, two, three, four, five, six. Six colors out of that. But I don't... I'm not 100% sure why I sh use this color I, if I were to use... Hmm? If I were supposed to use those colors. Color theory type class would probably... There's a theory, huh? There's answer right there. <laughs> wow. There's the answer for the color. So this was fun but I probably won't do it while doing the Sashiko live because it requires me thinking to choose the color and probably I wouldn't change it while stitching I haven't realized there were colors on your Hitomedashi jeans Yes, it's colored. And this is probably easier to look. Yellow, orange, blue. Kind of. I still don't understand that. So it's much, much easier for me to stitch this side. And this side probably I can do it in the live streaming. 
ideally not because it requires a little bit of attention, but this is doable while I'm talking. This one is this one is probably not gonna be doable. So this one is the completely different story because <clears throat> I the purpose of this <laughs> sorry the purpose of this fabric. Yeah, I don't know if, how many people are here from that age, like a few years ago. The purpose of this fabric is to not to think, not to think. Not to think. So I did not even think about the patterns. I didn't think about the colors. So I used whatever thread I had on my table back then. I was not teaching this much. I was not. I was not really working back then. So I had a, like a place to only do sashiko stitching. And I was probably stitching many hours per day. Like, I was either watching my daughter or stitching. Um, back then, I wanted to really just stitch without thinking. You were there, Candida? <laughs> so this one is a good example of not caring the color. Some people probably don't like this red. I don't like this red, and I don't know why I use this red. It's bothering me, but I don't want to take it out. Because I don't like taking the thread out. This becomes... This one is doable. This one... Hmm. Well, I'll think about it. And... I'm not saying like it's... It's meaningless, meaningless to apply colors to the I mean, fabric. It's very important to learn the color, color, so... When I have time, when I have time, I'll do that. But yeah, color is very difficult. My mother is very good at it too, though. So, I kind of leave it to her. She can do it for me, she can do it for us. Uh, probably you can do it for me too. <laughs> I'm not really that kind of person who are very particular about that purpose. Okay, um, it's a little bit early today. I have done stitch for one hour-ish. <clears throat> Why um, am I finishing up early today? Oh. I did not have to finish up early today, but since I did not bring the topic today, I will finish up. A um, little bit earlier than usual. Next week, next week, February, February 9th, Thursday night, after this live streaming, 10.30, around 10.30, we will have the gathering, which is open to the public. Anybody can join that, unless you, unless they like sashiko and Japanese culture. If they don't like, if you don't like Japanese culture, sashiko, please don't come. It's going to be you know, boring to you, too. So that's going to be happening next week. And I will change the topic today after listening to my live streaming again. So... Color is very personal things too. You can learn all the theory you want and then throw it out of the window and use what you like. Yeah, I think that's what makes you an artist, right? And that's what I probably would like to try and also that's what I respect a lot. So, I have my own tradition and I'm kind of, you know, my preference is easy going, which is indigo and white thread. And I want to kind of mix it, mix it with your own preference and creativities. So, that's what you call sashiko. And I hope that it's going to be sashiko because you care for the stories behind the world. So next week is the live streaming as well as the gathering. The gathering was very fun last week, so if you could join, that'd be great. And yep, that's about it. I hope you have a good... Oh, yes, I hope you have a good night. But then after 
that week, two weeks after that, the end, sorry, the fourth week of the February, I, I will be in the Atlanta, I will be in the Quiltcon, so I won't be able to do this live streaming. But yeah, I, I can do it next week and after that. Okay. Have a good night. Bye-bye.